Hi, welcome to today's lesson on solving systems of linear equations by graphing. In our last lesson, we talked about what a system of linear equations is. It's any time we have more than two, two or more linear equations, and we have them on the same graph. What is a solution is where do they intersect? Where do they meet? We want to find the two point, the, the one point where these two lines intersect. So let's do a couple of examples. We'll do an easy example and a not so easy example. So let's start with the easy example. So the question would be, what is the solution to the following system of linear equations? So again, we're trying to figure out where do the two lines intersect. So we go y equals 3x and y equals 4x minus 1. Making these pretty easy because they're already in slope intercept form. So they're going to be easy for me to graph. I don't even need to make a table. I know how to use point, the, the slope part, and I know how to use the y intercept to create the graph. So now I want to put these two equations on the same graph. So we'll start with the one on the left. We have a B value, it's right here. So there isn't one, so B is zero. So I'm gonna be starting here at zero on the lot, right there at the origin in the middle. And we have a slope of three. I can make anything a fraction by putting a positive one under it, so I have a rise and a run. So now I'm gonna rise one, two, three, and I'm gonna run one, and there's my, there's my first graph. So now I want to find out where does the other, put the other one on there and see where they intersect. So again, I'm going to begin at negative 1. And again, my slope is 4, which I will put a 1 under it again to give myself a rise and a run. So I will start at negative 1, rise 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. You can see I land right on that same dot. So even though these, these graphs are, look very, very similar, and it maybe even looks like I hit for more than a, more than just one dot. If that's just thickness of the pen, maybe the quality of my drawing, the fact that I'm doing it by hand, I don't have nice graph paper, okay? But I can clearly identify this as this point one, comma, one, two, three. Now, it's not enough for me to just say that's where they meet, okay? Because, again, maybe my drawing skills aren't, aren't great. Maybe I made some kind of error, maybe, who knows? But to be sure, I always want to check my solution. I always want to take that point, plug it into both equations, and make sure it works. So does th so? this is x and this is y. So y is 3. Does that equal 3 times 1? Well, of course it does. Then I go to this side. Does 3 equal 4 times 1 minus 1? Well, 4 times 1 is 4. Is 4 minus 1 equal 3? Yeah, of course. Now I'm sure that 1, 3 is the solution to this system of linear equations, y equals 3x and y equals 4x minus 1. I've done it visually because that is what, when we do it other ways, we still want to be thinking this is what's happening. We're finding out where the points, where the two lines meet. What's that intersection, okay? Maybe it's a street of intersection, you know, where this, this street and that street connect. Okay, maybe that's something you decided this is where we're going to meet. I don't know. Okay, but that's how this is done. And again, this is a fairly easy one because these equations were nice and simple. They were already in slope intercept form, so I didn't have to come up with very much. I didn't need to make a table of values to generate the points for the graphs. Had, had I done that, I would have seen they both have the point 1, 3 in their table. So if I'd used like the points, negative one, zero, and one, they both would have given me one, three when I plugged in the one, okay? And again, that's the nice, that was an easy one. Let's try a not so easy one. Okay, so we got two equations here. How about uh, negative three X minus Y equals negative one and two X plus 4y equals negative 16. Now, right off the bat, I got a problem because these are both in standard form, which, which 
as we know, is kind of a terrible form from a graph standpoint. I don't know anything about the graph looking at the equations. I need to get them into another form, preferably slope-intercept form. I could make tables, I could find intercepts, but if I start finding intercepts, I'm gonna get a fraction here, and that's gonna make my life difficult from a graphing standpoint. Trying to graph a fraction, like one half, like, like a point that is a fraction, not so great. Slopes that are fraction, excellent. So I'm gonna go through the process of getting this into slope-intercept form, okay? And so we're gonna add the three X to both sides. And again, I wanna get it into that MX plus B format, except that the Y should be a one Y, not a negative one Y. And positive 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. So now I have it in slope intercept form, ready to graph. But before I do that, let me get the other one converted as well. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and divide everything by 4. So I get y equals. 2 divided by 4 is a half. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. Negative 16 divided by positive 4 is a negative 4. And now I have two equations in slope-intercept form ready to graph. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all this up here. I'm going to bring my equations up. y equals negative 3x plus 1 and y equals negative 1 half x minus 4 and now I'm ready to graph so I'm going to give myself a nice big graph here right here okay. so we'll start with this one we're going to have a beginning point of 1 and we have a slope of negative 3, which again is a rise. And again, this time, the 1 is always positive, so that's going to send me to the right. So we're going to begin at 1. We're going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And again, just to play it safe, I like to do it twice. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Okay. Not perfect, but probably going to be good enough. So here we're going to begin at negative 4. We got a slope of negative 1 half, which is a rise. I don't need to put a fraction because I've already got one. So I'm going to start at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to go down 1 and over 2. I'm going to go down 1 and over 2. Whoops. Yeah, can't. There we go. Close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is why I like to count out a couple of points because oftentimes that's what's going to, I'm going to land on something. And if I look, I've landed one, two, and negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, not really that well drawn. Part of that is because I'm going that way. Part of it is something else. But I have my point. And, I, and because I counted the rise and the run, I used my slope and landed right on that spot. I feel better about it, okay? Um, or, excuse me, not negative seven. Why did I say seven? Why did I go down? One, this is one, two, three, four, five. Negative five. I don't know where seven came from. Um, now I feel better. Right, because I, I started here um, at negative four, I went down one and over two. Boom. So that's where that should be. There we go. See, even I have off days. Trust me, I'm having as off a day as you can have. Um, so now, just to be sure, I'm going to check my solutions. So negative five is my y. So this is x and y. So does negative five equal now? before I check that solution. I'm gonna go back to the original equation. 
negative 3x um, minus y equals negative 1. I'm going to put in that th 2, so there's negative 3 times 2 minus negative 5, does that equal negative 1? Well, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative times a negative becomes plus. Does negative 6 plus 5 equal negative 1? Yes. And you always want to check it in the original problem because if you made a mistake converting it, you won't find your mistake because you'll confirm your mistake. So you want to check it back in the original to make sure it works. So it works here. The original one here was 2x plus 4y equals negative 16. So does 2 times 2 plus 4 times negative 5, does that equal negative 16? Well, 4 plus negative 20 does in fact equal negative 16. So again, you always want to check your solution in the uh, original problem because when you check it in, in one that you've converted, you may have made a mistake and it will simply confirm your, your mistake is right. It'll tell you that what you did is right, even if it is not, okay? So in order to solve by graphing, okay, you obviously need to graph. So you need to graph the two equations on the same lot, on the same graph, figure out where they intersect visually, look at it, say that's the spot, then name it, give it its point value, its coordinates, its x and its y, and then check that solution in the original equations to make sure that it works for both. Because at this point, you're confirming that you've done it correctly. Now, if I had made a mistake, what if, what if I had stuck with that negative seven that I, for whatever reason, thought that was it? I would immediately find out that it didn't work because this would not come out right. It would suddenly be negative six plus five equals negative one. And I would tell myself that's not right. I must have made a mistake somewhere in there. Maybe it's because I read it wrong. Maybe it's because I graphed it wrong. It's maybe because when I converted it, I made a mistake. There's plenty of places where I could have made a mistake on this, but this is where I can confirm that I didn't make any mistakes and that I absolutely have the correct point where the two lines intersect, okay? And that is done graphically. Now, there are gonna be times, very soon in fact, where graphing's not a real good option, mostly because the places where you would have to plot the points are going to be ugly. Okay, maybe the point that you're looking for is actually, you know, one half comma three sevenths. Okay, I wouldn't even know where that is on a graph. I wouldn't be able to visualize, is that a seventh? Is that three sevenths? I don't know. So when you get to those situations, we're going to have to have another way to do it. Now we're going to see two more ways to do it. Uh, next, in the next two lessons, we're going to see one called substitution, and then my personal favorite one called elimination. And when we get to that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully be in a better state of mind anyway. Um, but again, those are when those work when the numbers are not very convenient. With graphing, you're going to find the numbers are always pretty nice, um, whole numbers almost all the time. Every once in a while, they'll give you a fraction like a half, but not anything more complicated than that. Because if it gets to the point where you're trying to visually identify something like, like I said, like three sevenths, you, you're, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay, people can't do that. Computers could do it, but you, you are not in a position to look at a graph and say that is clearly at the point two comma three sevenths. Sorry. So when those are the answers that you're going to be looking for, we're going to need a different method. And we're going to see that method in the next set of lessons right after this one. Okay. Well, I hope that was clear. And I will see you in class for office hours.